Another record shattered by WWE today as their stock closed at $111, which is the highest that the WWE stock has ever closed in history. April 21, they closed at 109.35, broke that yesterday at 111, and so they're uh, absolutely swimming in money. And, uh, you know, I was talking about this with Lance today. The Lance Storm show is up because we were talking about Wembley and that John Cena promo and how John Cena was teasing a WrestleMania in London. And the fact of the matter is, you know, the the argument against WWE ever running a WrestleMania in London is that nowadays they make a lot of money off these, um, you know, the site fees. So, for example, if they were going to run, you know, all these cities bid for, for WrestleMania. So maybe Seattle wants it, San Francisco wants it. So they all make a bid. And it's like, you bring it here and we're going to give you an, an additional $30 million to bring WrestleMania here because you're going to bring in, you know, X number of tourists, et cetera, et cetera. Well, the issue with London is they don't need that. They don't need to pay a site fee for WrestleMania. It's not like they're hurting for tourists. They get 40 million tourists every year. And so, you know, the that is one thing working against the idea of WrestleMania going to London because if the options were WrestleMania goes to Orlando or WrestleMania goes to London and uh, Orlando is willing to pay $30 million for WrestleMania and London is not, then uh, the obvious answer to be, the obvious answer would be, will we go to Orlando, get that extra $30 million. So, uh, you know, the, the reality is, I believe, that if you live in... London, if you live in the UK anywhere and you want WWE to run WrestleMania in London or wherever in the UK, what you need to do is you need to go buy a ticket for Wembley. Because if, and I don't even think if, like, but I will just say if, if they break the all time legitimate attendance record which I think is around 81,000 fans, the paid attendance for a wrestling event, 81,000 fans. If AEW breaks that, then, you know, this $111 for the uh, the WWE stock, you know, they got upcoming TV deals. I mean, they got, they got an impossible amount of money. And so they, there is no law, there is no rule that they must get a site fee for WrestleMania. I do not in any way think that it is impossible that if Wembley ends up selling 81,000 tickets, 82,000 tickets, that WWE will forego that site fee in order to run two nights at Wembley and do, I don't know, whatever, 82, 83,000 both nights. I mean, do not think that that is impossible, that they would do that if, if Wembley ended up getting 81, 82,000 uh, tickets sold. So... You know, there's, and then they may even already have that intention because you don't send John Cena out there to tease the idea that they're going to run a WrestleMania in London without the idea that, you know, there's a very good chance that we're actually going to do this. And in fact, I believe that they just uh, sent out a deal where they announced that uh, they're going to Wembley Arena, which is not Wembley Stadium, but uh, they've got a show coming to the other Wembley. And uh, yeah, I mean, People are going to listen to this and go, oh, what an AEW shill. I'm not an AEW shill. This is a WWE thing. If you want WrestleMania in London, go buy a ticket to Wembley, and that is your best shot of getting a WrestleMania, two nights of WrestleMania in London. So anyway, Mike Hallock, better known to wrestling fans as Mantar, has passed away. His daughter announced that her father passed away in his sleep July 11th. He was 55 years old. WWE stated they are said and learn that Mike Hollock, better known to WWE fans as Mantar, has passed away. His combination of size, charisma, immediately captivated fans worldwide as he took to the ring in a giant bullhead to highlight his half-man, half-minotaur min persona. Spent time in WWE, ECW, paid some of the biggest stars of his generation, like Bam Bam Bigelow, Ray's Ramon, Bret Hart. WWE extends its condolences to Mike Hollick's family, friends, and fans. Former USWA Unified World Champion beat Jerry Lawler for the belt March 15th, 1997. Wrestled Tank from the Truth Commission at the time. Lawler won the belt back a week later. Started his career in the early 90s. Wrestled as Bruiser Mastino, which is a great name. 
signed with WWE in 94, adopted the half-man, half-bull gimmick of Mantar, entered in the 95 Royal Rumble, had televised matches with Bret Hart and Razor Ramon, left the company in the summer of 95, wrestled briefly in ECW again as Bruiser Mastino, was the Truth Commission's tank in USWA, before joining Germany's CWA promotion, he actually entered the uh, the cluster at Joey Janela's Spring Break 2019 for GCW, which I think may have been his last uh, wrestling appearance. But you know, I was thinking about this today because I have been uh, I was watching all of those retro Raws before we foolishly moved to NWA TNA, and you know, Mantar came to the ring in a bullhead. You know, wrestle crap the whole nine yards. And, uh, you know, everyone makes fun of the gimmick and everything like that. But I was really thinking that, you know, obviously it's not his fault that they gave him that gimmick. But I think that one of the problems with the 90s was they had so many stupid gimmicks that, uh, you know, this guy coming to the ring with a bull on his head, it was like he was just immediately written off by a lot of fans. But the fact of the matter is, you know, a, a gimmick like Mantar actually could have worked. And I was talking about this with Lance. You know, people hear man, tar, and everything like that. They're like, how stupid and everything like that. You guys realize that one of the, and actually, I wouldn't even say one of, the greatest gimmick, the greatest gimmick in the history of professional wrestling was a guy called The Undertaker. His gimmick was that he was dead and that uh, there was a magical urn and, uh, and this bloke uh, would pull the lid off and a spotlight would shine and he could do magic. And he could rise to heaven. You can't name me a dumber gimmick. But you know what? The right guy made it work. And uh, Lance brought up Mick Foley. You know, his his gimmick was mankind. You know, you tell fans the gimmick. His gimmick is mankind. You know, what is the gimmick? I don't know. He's a guy called mankind. Then, you know, he's got three different personas. I mean, you know, there's so many gimmicks in wrestling that, you know, with the right guy doing the gimmick... The right guy getting the right push. I mean, you can make it work. A Vader. His name was Big Van Vader. And he wore an elephant uh, thing on his head that blew smoke. And, uh, you know, you tell that to a normal person. It's like, how could that possibly? Well, it did. Because the guy, Leon White, playing Vader, was absolutely awesome. And, uh, you know, the story with Vader, too, you know, that gimmick almost went to the guy that ended up being the ultimate warrior. And uh, how long do you think that Big Van Vader would have lasted with a Jim Helwig playing the role? It's the right guy in the right role, and really anything can work. I mean, doink. When, uh, when doink was played by Matt Bourne, I mean, you go back and watch it, and the gimmick was actually awesome. But, you know, it was the 90s, and there were garbage men, and there were race car drivers, and there was, you know, whatever. Plumbers. And so, you know... Yeah, people didn't have patience for that sort of thing. But, you know, you, you could have made a gimmick, Mantar, work. Uh, but uh, it didn't work, unfortunately. And uh, and that's the story. But all the best to the friends and family of Mike Hollock. Uh, sad to hear anybody pass away, especially at the age of 55. And uh, once again, all the best. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never 
you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.